Hello, and welcome to a bonus episode of the Physique Development Podcast. This show is a question and answer based show where we take questions we have been asked by our listeners and answer them through our industry experience as coaches and from our own professional perspectives. Today, we will be doing things a little bit differently and having a coach on. We normally do the three co owners, Alex, Austin, and Sue, but as a company, we have other coaches on staff. So today, I coach Sue and am joined by Kaylee. Hey guys, I'm Coach Kaylee. So you'll be hearing from Kaylee, getting to know who she is, and you'll very quickly see why we want her on the staff and why she is on the staff of Physique Development. So we'll be going into her life, her background, um, as well as being able to hear a little bit about being vegan and gluten-free, as well as her journey through fitness. Um, so you have, if you haven't listened to the other coaches, I would highly recommend being able to listen to the other coaches we have on staff. We have an episode for Courtney, for Katie, for Mackenzie, for Charlotte as well as for Maggie. So Kaylee is rounding it out here and you'll be able to have met all of the coaches on staff. And then as we continue to grow, we will of course have more episodes like this. So you have heard me talk plenty here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hear from Kaylee. So why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about who you are? Yeah, absolutely. So I currently live in Tucson, Arizona. I dove into the fitness world in this past year. Um, With quarantine, I kind of lost my job and it really forced me to take a step outside of my comfort zone. And I have really fallen in love with my own personal fitness journey in the last several years. So I decided to pursue my um, personal training certification. And, you know, we, we ended up here. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead and talk a little bit more about kind of how you got into fitness, not only coaching fitness, but you personally into fitness, and then we'll get into the coaching aspect. Of course. Uh, So fitness has always been a part of my life. Uh, Growing up, I always took dance classes. From the time I was four years old, I started at the Parks and Rec taking ballet. Um, I didn't love it at first. I used to hide in the closet. I was really (laughs) shy. I was always a person in the back corner of the classroom. Um, So it really helped me to grow when I was younger to to form relationships and friendships. Um, I fell in love with dance, all different types of it. And I actually danced all the way through college at the University of Arizona. So that always kind of provided some type of structure and fitness for me. I never really had like experience in the weight room per se, but it kept me active. Um, I also had a brief stint of competitive swimming uh, throughout middle school, and that allowed me to shed my baby fat, if you will. (laughs) I was always the tallest kid in the classroom, um, a little bit bigger until that age. I really slimmed down and got very skinny because of that large amount of cardio. Yes. (laughs) Well, with that, I know that we have talked a lot just kind of about how you went from having that smaller body and wanting to really grow and start taking up space. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what it looked like getting into the weight room and kind of what your journey has been as you try to put on weight and grow and take up more space? Yeah, of course. Um, So kind of transitioning into my early years of a vegan diet, I wasn't super educated on it. And coming out of the the dance background, I kind of carried some um, limiting beliefs with me that I needed to be smaller and take up less space. And I lost a lot of weight on my first year eating vegan just because I was not consuming enough calories. And, you know, I saw all these beautiful figures in the fitness space that I wanted to look like, and in my head, I was like, you know, I think I'm doing things right. Like, why is my body not looking like that? Things just weren't adding up. And I wanted to feel empowered in my body and I wanted to learn how to put muscle on. So I really just took a deep dive and I started following these Instagram accounts and YouTube accounts and really just educating myself and eating a lot of food (laughs) Um, and learning to build that muscle. And it has been the most empowering experience for me. I never 
imagine being able to feel this way in my body. And it's, it's been really cool. Yeah. I loved when I was getting to know Kaylee a little bit more, especially getting to know her background. She had talked about like, I I just want to work with women who want to gain muscle, who want to learn of course, and be able to be knowledgeable about everything, but want to get into that weight room. And it's not all about shrinking and being small, which of course we can all recognize what it's like to want to go to through a diet and want to look a certain way. And we have never wanted once demonize that. I mean, we help people get into the absolute best shape of their life. So we are not against that whatsoever. But I think there is something to be said. And we had talked about it a little bit on the last podcast with a coach just about feeling a certain way within your body and that often leading to why you're so passionate about something within fitness. And especially for you coming from this place of being smaller, wanting to take up less space. And I hear that a lot when it comes to dancers. Um, I have a few friends that grew up within ballet and Mm -hmm. As you can know within ballet, it, there's a lot that goes on within perpetuating how small you have to be. Mm-hmm. And I know growing up as a female, it was always about being smaller, taking up less space, um, being able to like not be bigger than a male or having, if you by chance ever were in a situation where you're going to get on a male's back or sit on their lap, like you, <laughs> you had to make sure that it was going to be okay for you to do that. Um, and it was something that was very much perpetuated, um, not by my family or anything, but just through my childhood growing up that women need to be small. And a huge passion of mine when I got into fitness was realizing like, I don't need to be small. I can be jacked. I can be whatever I want and I can be whoever I want. And it was so cool hearing you talk about that um, and just how empowered you felt. So I'd love to also hear just about what that looks like for how you want to help people about the way that you felt and when you had that epiphany and being able to facilitate that for others. Yeah, I can totally relate to a lot of the things that you just said, like growing up and being that small. um, I have so many vivid memories of just like going shopping for clothing and not even being able to fit into like the smallest women's size clothing. And that really takes a toll on your mentality. And now like I look back and you and I were talking the other day about growing seasons and not being able to fit into your clothing and looking <laughs> the other at it, way. <laughs> yeah, looking at it from the opposite spectrum. And I I had that moment a few months ago and instead of being upset about it, like those moments in the past where it was like, man, I can't even fit into these really small jeans, I was like, freak yeah, I can't even fit into my big girl jeans now. <laughs> and it just it feels so good to know how far I've come on this journey, not only physically, but also mentally to know that, you know, I no longer fear these foods in the past when, you know, I would look at things like a bagel or ice cream and think there's no way that fits into my life in this fitness world. And to now know that I can eat those foods and feel no feelings of guilt or shame and know that I can live this balanced, amazing lifestyle that feels so good and still have this body that I absolutely love and adore. And I really just want to be able to share those feelings with as many women as possible. Yeah. And how is it going from a place of eating so little to now being able to to push in the opposite direction? What does that look like for your just quality of life and your enjoyment within all of this? It's so cool. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it definitely has days where it's challenging and, you know, I'm really full. Um, But it's it's really amazing to just be able to push the limits of your body and see what you truly are capable of. Um, You know, if you had told me five years ago that I would be eating this much food, I probably would have, my jaw would be on the floor. I would not have believed you. But now to be able to to live this lifestyle where I can do the things that I love, um, eat the foods that I enjoy and not feel any type of restriction, um, not feel held back in any way and still reach my goals. It's just, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. And uh, speaking of having to eat a lot, uh, we were also talking the other day about how she has to spend an arm and a leg for good quality bread that is both (laughs) vegan and gluten-free, which anyone who has gone through a growing season or a time of pushing more food knows how the groceries um, can get a little bit out of hand sometimes it feels like, especially coming from a time that it wasn't eating that way. Um, But I do want to talk a little bit about kind of what led you to being vegan and then what after being vegan for a little bit, what led you to being gluten-free? Yeah, of course. 
Uh, so I actually have struggled with chronic migraines for my entire life. Um, I remember being five years old and I would get, I mean, at that age, you don't know what a migraine is, but just like my head would hurt so bad and I would have to take the gross liquid ibuprofen <laughs> and just kind of curl up in a ball and I would always, I would get sick and then I would feel better. And I just, my whole entire life, I just kind of accepted that it was something I would always have to deal with. And I, my doctors had always prescribed all of these different medications to me and nothing ever really seemed to help. And I never really had ever considered my diet. Um, my mom actually struggles with rheumatoid arthritis and she had always kind of pushed on me, you know, you should try a vegan diet because it helps with inflammation. Um, she had tried it and it had really helped alleviate a lot of her symptoms. And I had always dragged my heels. I was like, oh, that just sounds so <laughs> hard. I don't want to give up all these foods. And mostly it was just because, you know, your mom is always right. And I didn't <laughs> want to admit that to her. Um, hi, mom. I love you. <laughs> but, they are sadly always right. Um, but. <laughs> um, so finally, I was like, you know what? Like, I am just at wit's end here. I'm going to give it a try. And so I actually, I was pescatarian for a brief stint and I was like, I don't really need the fish anymore. So I gave that up. Um, I held on to eggs for a little while because I did really enjoy them as food. Um, and I still was just not getting the relief I'd hoped for. Uh, so I cut the eggs out and I did start to see a lot of differences in my inflammation um, through all areas of my body, but especially with my migraines. Um, and that, that really worked for a while. Um, and I then went through a period at the beginning of quarantine last year where I was still having pretty frequent migraines. I think a lot of it was stress related, but, um, after doing some research, I realized that gluten was also, um, a major food that contributed to inflammation. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to go through a small trial period and see how this affects me. Uh, when I cut the gluten, it went from having migraines almost every single day to about one or less a month. And I was like, you know, that that's got to be something yeah. that's just not agreeing with me. So it definitely has been a big lifestyle change, but it's it's worth it. Yeah, I think a big thing to touch on there is not necessarily that you have to be vegan or you have to be gluten free, but first being able to really take a look at what the foods you are eating and how that affects you and being able to kind of run the gamut of like, hey, what is going on? Let me test some yeah. different periods. Let me give it a shot. If it doesn't work, I'll, I'll change the game plan. I'll figure something else out. I, I might be in pain for a little bit longer, yeah. but I know <laughs> one more thing that doesn't help. So I can at least rule that yeah. out. Um, but it's also something of being able to listen to your body and see what it needs. Um, and I think it's really cool as far as like at the end of the day, and we talked about this all in Maggie's po podcast of how your health is so freaking important. And I think that a lot of people, whether it comes to wanting to lose weight or maybe it's within a deficit or uh, those are the two same things. I don't know why I said them that way, <laughs> but maybe it's they're having migraines, something like that. It's sometimes hard just to get that change started because mm -hmm. you don't want to give up something that you're used to having. But I can speak for myself in regards to having issues within digestion and having to remove certain things from my diet. And I don't look at it personally, and you can touch in on this. I don't look at it personally anymore as much restriction. I look at it as a lot of relief um, where, yes, there are some times where I'm like, man, I could really go for X, Y, and Z that is really going to put me in pain. But at the end of the day, I have major relief on my quality of life on a day-to-day -day basis that those things aren't worth my quality of life whatsoever. Yeah, I agree on that 100%. Um, when most people first meet me and they hear that I'm vegan, I feel like I get asked so frequently, oh, like, what's the food that you miss the most? Or like, isn't it so hard to not eat meat and cheese and all these things? I'm like, honestly, I don't miss a dang thing. Like <laughs> uh, my quality of life has improved a hundredfold. Like there were days when I was just like face down on the nearest flat surface mm -hmm. and that's no way for anyone and to live. In a dark room with no noise. Exactly. Like, I'm like, I, no food is worth that. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. And that's funny because that truly is like the first thing I feel like people ask is like, what do you miss the most? Or yeah. why are you <laughs> vegan? And the reason I did want to talk about it was in regards to the headaches and migraines 
brains just because it is something that food is so powerful Mm -hmm. and you can utilize it to help you, but it can also hurt you, but it is dependent on the person. It's not that everyone should be vegan and that's the way someone's going to be successful because I've even had clients and I want to speak towards this because I think it is important to talk about different types of diets, different ways of living that I have clients that had been vegan in the past, but due to different things within their physiology, due to their blood results, they could not stay vegan because it was actually harming their health. And so it's something of being able to change the game plan when needed, but also being able to recognize like, obviously it's not a one size fit all, but we just need to try different things, see if they work. And if they give us the relief that we're looking for, that's all that freaking matters. And nothing else really holds a flame, a candle to any of that going on. Yeah. I was just wanting to touch on that. I think it is really important to remember um, that no diet is one size fits all. I have a lot of people who have come to me, you know, kind of inquiring about a vegan diet, and I'm always happy to provide information or to have a conversation. But just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's important to kind of test the waters and see how you feel on it. But like you said, it it could make you feel absolutely miserable. Like a standard diet did not work for me. Maybe it makes you feel 100%. Yeah. I think that's so important to touch on because I hated when people made it seem like there's this one way to eat. And if you don't eat this way, you're wrong. Yeah. Because that's not true. And it's even something for myself as far as if you're listening and you don't know, um, I have struggled with digestion a lot of my life. And I found out a big point of it was artificial sweeteners. Mm -hmm. And I do not, people ask me all the time, they're like, are artificial sweeteners bad for you? And I'm like, no, you can eat them all you want as long as they don't hurt you. They hurt me. I'm not going to eat them. And I think it's important to talk about food in that way because sometimes people end up getting on a little bit of a high horse of their diet is the best diet. And a big thing within um, some of the certifications I've gotten, as well as just the education I've gotten around food, is the best diet is the diet that you feel the best on and that you can adhere to on your day to day life. So I love that about Kaylee being able to learn that about what that looks like in her day to day life, and being able to even see like, hey, there, there's times where yeah, I do wish I could have something that I can't have. But I also need to think about what that quality of my life brings, which is always what I ask myself, I'm like, is this worth having a bad day right now? (laughs) Is this worth not feeling my best? And the answer is normally no. So I don't, I struggle with it as much either as far as Mm -hmm. missing certain foods because I'm like, oh no, I feel good. So I'm good with this. Um, But I do want to go back to you talking about losing your job. As I know, during quarantine, during everything that's happened in the past year. It's It's been a weird year to say the absolute yes, least. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and it's just been really cool to see people who have lost their job and found their way amongst all of that. And I know you were also offered your job back and decided to turn it down. And I, I want to talk about that just because that's hard to turn down guaranteed money. It's hard to turn down something that you know. Um, and it's also hard to lose something that you know. But kind of talking through your mentality through that? What pushed you to end up getting your CPT? What pushed you to say no when they asked for you back and what that looked like? Yeah, I think it ended up being kind of the biggest blessing in disguise for me. I I studied physiology and psychology in college, and I always knew that I wanted to help people. I just never necessarily knew how. I think going out of college, my plan was to take a year off, the infamous last <laughs> words. <laughs> and one year off. Yeah, and that kind of turned into a few more years than one year um, because I ended up in the restaurant industry and I was making really good, easy money. Um, I met a lot of people, a lot of my best friends. Um, and so it was just, it was comfortable. And I just, I showed up, I did my job every day. I got to leave it there, you know, wipe my hands clean and went to bed, wake up, repeat. It was just kind of brainless work and and it was easy. And the older I got, I started to realize that, you know, I, I was just itching for something more, but I just, I wasn't really sure what, and I didn't want to go back to school necessarily if I wasn't like 
absolutely certain and like gung ho that I wanted to drop that yeah. large amount of money. <laughs> large amount of money just to <laughs> not know what to do. Yeah. And so, um, gosh, a little over a year ago at the gym, I actually met some friends and one of them was an occupational therapist and one was a personal trainer. And I was like, man, that's really cool. Because when I did go to school, my original plan was to do um, physical therapy. So I was like, these are, that's, if you combine the two of them, that's like kind of what I had wanted to do. So I was like, maybe it's a sign that I met these people. Um, so I had started training with the two of them and like learning more and more about being in the gym. And it just really started to spark my interest on top of everything I had really started to learn through Instagram, YouTube, all the resources. And I was like, you know, this is something that I could really do. Like I could make a living for myself doing this. Um, so then I lost my job. I spent the first month probably just sitting around watching Gilmore Girls. Like what the <laughs> heck am I going to do with my life? And I was like, all right, time to put the big girl pants on and figure this out. Um, and so I started seeing ads because, you know, your phones listen to you, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. FBI um, agent. <laughs> he's on it. And I started seeing ads for um, ACE and NASA. And I was like, okay, so this is how you get the personal training certification. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I have nothing else to do right now. I'm just going to do it. So I, like, did the fast track, like, got it done as quickly as possible. And I just, like, I dove straight in. And as like right before I was about to take my certification test, um, I got the offer to go back and work in the restaurant. I did for a couple of weeks right when they opened and then they offered for me to come back full time. And I was like, you know what? I was like, I have a big goal to like go into business for myself right now and really make this happen. And I was like, I appreciate the offer from you, but I'm, I'm going to do this for myself. And I, I just went for it. I dove in head first and I never looked back and it has been the most rewarding decision. Yes. I, I absolutely love that. And it's something that, I mean, just like you talked about us, so being a blessing in disguise of how it all panned out. I, I'm personally very thankful because yeah. <laughs> it landed you here, right here doing this podcast, being on Team PD. So I'm very thankful for how that all panned out. Me too. But it's also <laughs> something as far as hearing the the passion that's behind that of what that looks like on your day-to-day -day life. As we were just talking about quality of life when it comes to food and what that looks like on your day-to-day, -day, you also have to take into account what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you hate it, or even if you don't hate it, but you don't love it, mm -hmm. it's hard to live a life that's as fulfilling as you want it to be if you're constantly in this place of, oh, I mean, like it pays the bills. Like, yeah. and sometimes you have to be in that place. I understand it's not realistic to always be super passionate about everything that you're doing. I've been in the place of working multiple jobs and trying to make ends meet and having to move back in with my parents and a multitude of other factors there. So <laughs> by no means do I want to simplify it and just be like, do what you're passionate about and it'll all work out. Yeah. <laughs> I get the point of having to go and do other things um, and to have to make ends meet at the end of the day. But I absolutely love being able to see people get to the thing that makes ends meet, but also makes sets their heart on fire, mm -hmm. makes them excited to wake up each day and just to work. And that's something that's been really cool not only getting to know Kaylee, but especially just over this weekend of having the coaches in town, being able to talk to her a little bit more, um, talk about what she wants out of being able to be a coach for PD and just seeing her face light up when she starts talking about, oh, I can't wait to be helping all of these people. I can't wait to have these clients to be able to show them what they're capable of, what they're able to do, what we, we can make happen. And it's just been so cool to see that firsthand because you don't get to see that passion in everyone on within their job. So it's something I'm extremely passionate about and extremely happy to have right in front of me and to see that passion. But um, I want to also just touch on a few other things for you. We'll go into a few random rapid fire questions, but is there anything else that you want the listeners to know about you, about your journey, about fitness, about being vegan and gluten-free, about living in Arizona, anything else? I think we touched on some good points. Good deal. Then uh, let's go into a few just rapid fire, get to know her. What color is your toothbrush at home? 
blue. Well, I guess it would be here with you. I would not want you to have <laughs> left that at home. Um, what is your favorite song? Oh my gosh, I'm a huge music person. I don't. I know. I, I do. A favorite. As soon as I said it, I was like, "That's probably her worst nightmare." It that is. I just asked I her. Think that. My brain just exploded. <laughs> Well, I guess we could talk about music a little bit. Uh, Kaylee is a big music person. We talked about it a little bit yesterday about oldies rock, and she grew up listening to that with her dad. So she's been to an impressive amount of concerts of (laughs) very impressive artists. And then she is also into um, EDM music. And so she's been to a multitude of festivals. She was talking about how she got the notification that Coachella was this weekend, um, but (laughs) she just has a standing ticket um, to be able to be at Coachella. Um, what would be your favorite all-time meal that you could eat? Oh, there's this really excellent restaurant in Tucson. It's called Tamerico, and it's all vegan. Um, most of it's gluten-free. It's her style of Mexican food, oh, and it's fun. just amazing. Was it on it Diner was, Drive-Ins on, and Dives? Yes, it was. At first, I cannot <laughs> believe I just realized that. That I, makes me so happy. <laughs> I, I do not watch Diner drive and Drive like super often at all. It's always on when we're at hotels. Mm-hmm. Like for some reason, it just is. And I remember watching that. And I literally, I guarantee if I look at my phone right now, there's a note in my phone oh my gosh. of you Tamerico. Visit and eat I now. definitely do <laughs> because I remember watching it and I was like, that food looks flame and it's all vegan. I swear every time I eat it, I'm like, oh, I never remember how freaking good yeah. this is. It's well, so good. <laughs> we'll, we'll be booking a trip here soon. I, I can't even believe I just remembered that. I'm a little I bit impressed it. with myself. Um, what is your favorite muscle group to train? Mm, I love training glutes. I feel like that's a cop out answer, <laughs> but I also love well, training. I delts. don't think it's a cop out because <laughs> I hate training glutes. So <laughs> it's what it is. Uh, what's your favorite drink? Water. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, Maggie goes, besides water, coffee. <laughs> I was like, accurate. Um, And um, what, do you have anything fun going on in the upcoming weeks, months? I mean, starting to work for PD is pretty freaking fun. That is pretty freaking fun. Well, why don't you go ahead and tell them where they can find you on Instagram. My Instagram is at Kaylee Moon underscore fit. And then that will be linked in the show notes as well. And then if they do want to reach out to you with any questions, what is your email address? It's Kaylee at physiquedevelopment.com. And then if you do want to inquire to work with Kaylee, then it'll also be in the show notes, the link to inquire. If you're on Instagram, it'll be in the physique development Instagram bio, and you'll be able to choose her name. And then she will also have a link in her own bio. Um, But we are very, very excited to have Kaylee on board. I'm excited for you all to get to know Kaylee a little bit more and for you guys to be able to start working with Kaylee. Uh, So we are very thankful that you were able to come in town, get this all knocked out, and we can't wait to see what you accomplish. Yeah, I'm excited to be here.